Thanks. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. Thank you for joining us live. Today, we're talking about women in business. We've got some phenomenal women lined up. Hopefully, they will all make it. If not, we've got one phenomenal woman willing to sit down and talk to us. I'm your girl, Lady Bounce. And I am Picket Fence. Today's Mindfulness Minute is called Doing It Now. I will not squander this day, this hour, this minute. I will make the most of time. For the garment of destiny is woven from these fleeting moments. Time has a squirrely habit of getting away from us. So we must make the most of it by getting at least a small piece of what we want today. Think about the major league hitter going up to bat. If he can't get a home run, he'll settle for getting on base. If he can't get on base, he'll settle for staying alive by hitting a foul ball. Foul ball. If he can't hit a foul ball, he'll at least swing with all his might. Each one of us has, each one of us has been given more chance today. There is no shame in failure. So as long as we get out there and make the most of time, look out upon the mental landscape today. Do you see some hesitation there, some reluctance to give your utmost to life? That sense of doubt or fear, that lingering feeling that portrays itself as your protector actually hinders you from living to the fullest. With this mighty sound of own, reduce this negative thinking to its ashes. Word up. Word up. That was not a reason. Man. The reason I chose that for today is because a lot of times when we think about going into business or changing our careers, we're so fearful of the what ifs. And it's time that we just start taking that chance and just jump all the way in. And especially if you're a person that always wanted to have a business or move up in your career, we always hear that chatter in the back of our minds. Just ignore it and do what you really want to do. Word. So joining us today so far is fam, fam indeed, Miss Lania Perkins to us known as Cotton. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to jump right into it, baby. Go ahead and uh, set it off. Okay. So first of all, talk to us about which business, well, I mean, you have like 67 businesses, but talk to us about your businesses and what exactly you do with your businesses. Oh, you're right. I do have about 67 businesses, but um, actually my main business is LRP Financial Services. Um, I have actually started it in 2020, um, but I have been a part of the insurance industry since 2012. Um, so I help families with, um, insurance needs as well as retirement planning, college planning, um, creating generational wealth, as well as showing you ways on how to minimize your taxes, as well as how to avoid inflation. So that's what I mainly do. Also, you guys know, fam, and you are a fan of, um, my mom's business, um, which I do help out with, which is BJ's catering. And we are famous for our, um, homemade rolls. So, <laughs> you know, that keeps us really, really busy around the holidays. Hopefully, you know, by the end of this year, uh, we can look up for, you know, get some space um, to really start uh, marketing as well as branding our um, family uh, tradition um, with our roles. That would be great. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that would be great because only having to, you know, being able to get them like, twice a year, it, it's worse than the Girl Scout cookies. Because if you don't get in where you fit in, then you just don't get in. So yeah, that's- You, know, you cannot get in. You know that. Like you <laughs> got on that list. And the list begins in July, like June, July. So <laughs> you know, if you're not on that list, you know, I feel sorry for you. Right. But, 
Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I am looking into that for her because we do need um, a location as well as a space. And the good thing about it is you can always order the rose. All we ask is for, you know, 48 hour notice um, to give it time to um, rise and grow. But anytime that you call us and let us know, we're able to meet your needs. Man, don't tell Jay that. You about to have us. I uh, already, I didn't already Jay order no. some. Yeah, I already <laughs> done order some before. <laughs> yeah. Right, but I'm saying that, like, to know that you can get them more than twice a year, I'm going to need you to sit on down, sir. Sit on down. Hey, Easter's hey. coming, so. <laughs> right. Hey, for real. Got Just let to me know when I put your order. <laughs> Got them, have them. So yeah. at one point in time, we worked at the same place, working for in corporate America. What led to you saying, I'm going to take this step and put my own work in my own hands? Well, um, actually, I've always been that, you know, hustler type. I've always been an entrepreneur. So the industry that I am in now, um, it actually fell in my lap. It was it was more so health related because I was in a cosmetology industry and I was doing hair and I ended up um, in 2008, um, being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So that kind of slowed down my, um, way of living and I had to figure out something else. Um, and that got me into, um, it actually kind of fell in my lap. I went into a company doing customer service as usual, and they offered me a position to become a licensed agent. And I took it and I just, I ran with it. And to find out um, how lucrative the industry is, I, you know, I, I got into the, um, the financial part of it uh, more so than, you know, focusing on auto and home. I went into the life and health portion of it and I decided, um, you know, I want to take this to a whole nother level, start networking with a lot of people, um, became, um, start talking to them on how they started their business um, as well as how they built their industry. And I said, you know what, if they can do it, I can do it as well. So I did, I, I took the ball and I ran with it. And um, like I said, in 2020, I made it official to start LRP Financial Services. Fast, fast. Far enough. Mm -hmm. So we, we know how important it is, you know, to have life insurance. Can you, you know, just speak to that? Because, you know, when, when somebody dies, the first thing you see is the GoFundMe pop up. And I know that we mm. don't expect death. It's, you know, it happens unexpectedly. But what are some things that we could do insurance wise to prepare for that so we're not on GoFundMe? Well, it, it, let's talk about the stigma about life insurance, especially in our community, um, because people feel like, you know, I have to use it when I'm dead. And that's not the real case about life insurance. Life insurance a platform to help you build wealth as well as help pay off debt. And they have a lot of living benefits. Life insurance is not like, you know, our grandparents' life insurance. And we're not educated on that. This, what the wealthy does is leverage um, life insurance benefits to help um, build businesses, um, create wealth for their children, also pass on generational wealth. And it's a tax free and you have guaranteed growth um, utilizing the cash value part. This is how you can really create wealth within your home, which is pennies on the dollar. You can get a life insurance just coming out the womb. After seven days out the womb, you can actually get a life insurance policy, value that child at fifty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars, but also utilize those funds to help pay for their first car, um, pay for mm. college, also set up their retirement to be you tax free, but also it is protected under the IRS 7702 code um, to where the government um, is not able to touch that money. They're not able to access that money. You're not able to be sued. So it's, 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 it protects you from um, litigation. Um, you have guaranteed growth. You don't have the volatility. 
is safer than a 401k and when put as much money in so this is your savings account and you can actually utilize your money your money becomes better than your credit because now you have collateral to utilize these funds have your money growing with uninterrupted compound interest like it like in the savings tank but it's multiplying with this great multiplier and you can utilize it as collateral to um and borrow for yourself take a from the insurance company. This is how you use other people's money to create the wealth that you need as well as protect your assets. So it's more than just life insurance. We utilize it as asset protection. So in essence, you basically become like your own bank in a way. Like the bank Definitely. uses what your savings to lend out money or use your savings money how they feel fits their benefit. So it's you're right. able to use your own money is you're able to use your own money. You utilize it as collateral. So yes, you become your own bank. You pay yourself back whenever. If you do, let's say you miss a payment and you don't pay yourself back in the next couple of years, it's either deducted from your death benefit or you know you pay yourself back whenever. It's not affecting your credit. You set your rules. You become your own bank. Like you said, you are your own bank. You leverage your funds as, as it is with credit. You would take out a loan from yourself before you take out a loan from the bank and you pay yourself back interest and you pay the insurance company, you know, their portion of the interest. So now you're receiving gains on the money that you're paying yourself back and you're replenishing your your savings account. Yes. That's wow. dope. That's dope. Now, for some, you know, the people like uh, most people in America live check to check. What is the average cost range for someone to have insurance, a life insurance policy? It varies. Um, there's a variable when it comes to life insurance. Um, it is based off of your age, um, your gender, um, as well as your health. And if you're a tobacco user or a non-tobacco user. But insurance is not expensive at all. You can really, it just depends on what and I love to do it to see where they're at because you may be throwing money away unnecessarily as well as unknowingly. And we can actually move that money over to a vehicle that you are already spending that's already in your monthly or annual budget um, to where we can move that market where you get better gains and you're not missing out on money. But it, it's something as simple as a cup of coffee. If you can save seven dollars a day, that's two hundred and fifty dollars a month. That's three thousand dollars a year. Most of that, what you pay for the cost of insurance, you'll probably be paying about sixty dollars a year for life insurance, and the other is going into a cash accumulation bond. Huh. Wow. So it does. It it varies. It factors. Um, you know, your health is your wealth. And a lot of people don't know that your health is your wealth. So as long as you are healthy, you're eating right, you're not using chemicals. Now let's find where you may be throwing your money away. A lot of people say, hey, I cannot afford it. But, you know, you think about your expenses. What are you doing on the weekend? How much money are you spending when you go out with your family for entertainment? How much are you spending on fast food? How much are you spending on certain vices, you know? cigarettes <laughs> you know, those things become expensive but these are the things that you want to spend your money on now you just have to be a better saver if you can save this money and let it grow and you have access to it whenever you need it it's better you got to learn how to be a pack rat or a squirrel let's say a squirrel you have to learn how to be a squirrel and hide your nuts and put it over to where your nuts are continuously multiplying I like yeah. that. I, I think about that all the time, you know, when you're talking about going out. So we spent a lot, you know, a lot of our time being parents. So we sacrificed going out, you know, because we had expenses of the children. Well, now our children are are getting to the point where they're flying the nest. So we've been kicking it. And then and thinking about well, like what you said, the money that we spent enjoying this empty nest phase that we're entering, I'm like, man. We could probably be a millionaire. So I'm, I'm glad that you said that, you know, to just let people know it doesn't take a lot. You know, you can sacrifice, maybe go out on Friday and not go out Friday and Saturday and then hit the mall on Sunday. Just saving those pennies here and there. I'm like, a, 
if I invested in like, you know, a tequila company or something, I could probably be rich already. So yeah, exactly. that, that's, that's really, really good information because people tend to think that, you know, insurance or building wealth and growing wealth is something that you have to have a lot of money for, you know, in the beginning and you really don't. So you don't, you don't, if you have someone who's really educating you in the process, instead of selling you insurance, then mm. you understand the value of it. Um, like now you're empty nesters, but let's talk about your retirement. Where are you at in your retirement? Is your 401k going to last you for the next 20 or 30 years? And a lot of people don't know the stipulations that the government have when it comes to retirement planning. And with the government, a 401k, a IR, we call it the alphabet soup of retirement. If you get the ABCs or you got a letter or a number behind your retirement plan, you may need to consider um, refocusing on where that money is going. I just looked on a post on Facebook about a week ago and I had um, one of my uh, friends on Facebook was saying how their um, they lost 6% in their 401k. If you're really paying attention to your retirement plan, it's very volatile. It's in a market to where you can lose everything that you have worked hard for, just depending on how the market is fluctuating. Also, there are penalized because there's penalties when it comes to these plans that a lot of people do not understand. You cannot touch that money until you're 59 and a half. But what if an emergency happened and you need emergency funds? Now you're penalized by the government 10%. So now you have to pay the taxes on that and you have to pay a 10% penalty. Also, you have to look at how much you can put into it. If you want to become a millionaire, putting 19, the maximum that you can put into your retirement plan in a 401k, a 403b, a 457b um, is $19,500. For IRA, you can only put in $6,000 a year into these plans. Mm -hmm. Then once you return, once you turn 70, after 71, you have to take out required minimum distributions. So now that's tax. And just depending on how much you save, let's say that you have a million dollars saved in your retirement. Right now, your purchasing power is half of that because now you have to think about inflation as well as you have to think about the tax bracket that you're in. You're at a 34 percent tax bracket. So the government's going to take 34 percent. And that's just the federal tax. That's not including your state and local taxes. So now you're losing money. So that million dollars is worth five hundred thousand dollars that you have to live off for the next 20 or 30 years. And this is why a lot of our seniors are on fixed incomes. And these plans can actually help you receive um, lifetime income tax free. And that's what a lot of people don't know. Why would we put ourselves when you can have your own private reserve retirement account that's going to give you income for the rest of your life or until you turn 121 years old, not until you're 70. And if you don't take that money out before you're 70, what, 71 and a half, um, the government will penalize you 50%. So that's an additional 50% on top of the taxes that you have to pay. So we need to, you know, focus on not giving our money away to the government and start setting up private reserves, not only for ourselves, but also for our family. Because if anything happens to us, it doesn't go to the government. It doesn't go into probate or escrow. It goes directly to a beneficiary of our choice, tax-free. Mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. As they as they say in the studio, that was bars. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Got to spit it to it. We got to educate our community. I didn't know about this, and once I learned about it, I felt like it was a this. This is my mission to teach everybody, especially our community. It would be ignorant for me to you know hold this information from our people when we need it the most. That's that's pretty wild because when you said seventy one and a half, I think about the life expectancy expectancy in our community is not much more than that. Because we work ourselves to death. We stress about, you know, things that we could have really saved. It, like I said, it doesn't take nothing to save. If you have a piggy, piggy bank and you're putting a dollar away for your child a day, that's $30 a month, but it's not doing anything. It's not, you have to understand um, the rule of 72, a lot of people don't understand the rule of 72, but it was a um, formula that um, the Census Bureau 
um, came up with to see how long it's going to take for the um, community as well as um, the population to double. And the financial institutions did the same thing when it came to finances. If you know that you have a guaranteed rate of return and your money is continuously growing, we know how to make money. Our community know how to make money, but we know how to spend money. We are not prone mm -hmm. to saving money. And that's the only way that we're going to get out that financial rat race is to learn how to save, but also put our money into a vehicle or into what we consider a parking garage to where it's going to continue to multiply. If you're not, if your money is not with a great multiplier and this is the your main money, your serious cash that's going to last you for the rest of your life, then yeah, we're behind the eight ball and we're going to continue to be behind the eight ball. Now, now, when we talk about, you know, saving money and um, really being tight on your budget so that you're able to save money. Now, what would you say? It's like like uh, Lady Bounce was saying is like, you know, we're having fun. Finally enjoying our time. How do you balance that? Live your life. I'm not going to tell you not to live your life because this is what we're here for. You only have one life to live. Now is really going into your budget to see where, you know, you may have been, this is things that you may be, you know, spending money on. Let's look at your, your car note. Let's see if we can refinance your, finance your car note to find money to where you can be saving. Let's look into your 401k. What are you putting into that? You know, how protected are you in that plan? Let's look at this money. You're not, you're already spending this money. So you're not losing out on a lifestyle that you're living. Now we're finding ways to where you may be throwing money away unnecessarily as well as unknowingly. And then we can put it in the market to where you get a better rate of return. You're not losing out on your lifestyle. Now you're already saving these, you know, these dollars. Let's look into, you know, where, where are your debts at? How much interest rate are you paying? You know, where's your credit at to where we can help improve all these things. But also once we free up that money, you have to be disciplined enough to move that money into a market. That's going to give you um, a guaranteed rate of return. I like it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. It, yeah. it does make sense. So we actually had a question pop up and this person mm -hmm. wants to know about a family trust. What can you tell us about a family, you know, making a family trust or how does that work? Family trusts are amazing. Um, family trust, as well as just depending on which level of the business we do. I work with a business partner. Um, his name is Douglas Aze. Um, he's a part of the million dollar round table. And this is my mentor. He actually has a book called creating generational wealth. What the super wealthy know that we need to know. Um, and we actually partner up, um, with, um, Largo financial services, um, to, um, show you how to set up a private trust. It's called a private reserved account. And we show you ways on how to put it up, how to structure it and set it up. But you have to, you know, make sure that when it comes to your trust, your businesses, the trust is all in control because now there's a level of, um, you know, that's a tax haven, um, as well as um, you have control of your assets while you're here now, as well as in your grave and well on in life. This can go on for generations to generations to generations on how you set up the trust. You can say, hey, my great, 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 great grandchildren, I may not know, but I have this family trust set up to where they're going to be taken care of as long as they are my heir and I can prove that they are my heir from the grave, you can control how much money is delegated to that, um, to that family member um, that is a part of the trust. So family trusts are very important. You just really have to have enough collateral. What are you putting into the trust? You have to, it's, it's, it's all about the sacrifice. You have to be the one to sacrifice for your family in order to create that generational wealth. And then also you can set up a family trust to where your family trusts are paying for your life insurance policies that are creating income. Now your, your family trust can be worth over a million plus dollars because if anything happens to any one of those family members, 
the trust is always going to pay for um, their life insurance. So their death benefit is uh, taken care of and the beneficiary can be the trust. So that's how the um, that's how you create the wealth. So it's always continuously creating wealth through those life insurance policies. Word up. Wow. So in, in running your business, what has been your biggest aha moment? Like when the light bulb came on, like this is it. Ooh, <laughs> my biggest aha moment. I always, like I said, it was just, I don't like working for anybody else but myself. I, it, it, you know, that was my aha moment. Like, how am I going to make this work? I'm going to say that it hasn't been easy. It has been days to where I really want to give up on my business. And, you know, just like, no, or, you know, you have those sleepless nights to where you like I, this this is just re if if it keeps you up at night it's a passion so if it's if you are doing that um then you know you're going into the right direction but that aha moment was um like i said in 2020 i was i had covid and um dealing with covid it was like you got to do something you have i don't have any children but i have a niece that i take care of and I was like, how am I, if anything happens to me, how can I protect her, but also create a business for her to where she doesn't have to go work for anybody else but herself. And that's why it was important for me. That was my aha moment. I was like, I have to do something for her and I have to sacrifice myself now in order for her to benefit here for the future. Dope, dope. That's yeah. really dope. So you touched a little bit about, you know, Make sure that she said, what else inspires you to keep your business going? Really, it was it was just my it was actually my life struggles that keep my business going. You know, when you have something, you come and then you lose. And you have to build. It's just like like the phoenix rising up from the ashes. When you lose something and you feel like, you know, how can I get back to where I was? Um, life just taught me. I, I it, it was it was undeniable, but I had to lose in order to win. Um, And that was that was my motivation, as well as the things that I did not know when I got sick. I think it was my health issues um, that really gave me that passion. Like I would never want to put myself in that position again. I never want to get to the point to where I was doing hair. So I was living from hairstyle to hairstyle. And when you're in the cosmetology field, if you're not standing behind that chair, you're not making money. And I couldn't because I was paralyzed all the way from my right side down. So I had to figure out something like I didn't have insurance. I was self-employed. I didn't have medical insurance. And that was just stressful to me. I went through so much. And the level of medication that I do take was expensive. Per treatment, it's $5,000 per treatment. Mm. Wow. You know, an MRI is seven thousand dollars. These are things that you have to when you when you're responsible for it out of pocket, it depletes your funds real quickly. So I had to lose in order to realize, hey, something has to change. I need to learn finances because some I was mismanaging money real bad. So how can I figure out how to manage money? How can I protect my money as well as protect my protect my assets if anything ever happens to me again? And this is how I got into it. And this has been my passion. Like I don't want to have or see anybody go through the same situation that I had to go through. So, so tell us what's one or two things that you've learned about yourself while running your business besides the fact that you are a bad chick and you can do this what else did you learn about yourself oh i, I well i learned how to and i'm still this is still a learning process to be able to lead um also getting rid of self-doubt i mm. think that was my biggest issue is i doubted myself more than Folks that really believed in me did. And I, I felt like, you know, I wasn't worthy of this. 
But when God puts a calling on you, you have to go with it no matter what. And you sometimes have to get out of your comfort zone in order to live your your greatest potential. And that was those are the two things. I Once I had to get out of my comfort zone, I had to get out of my procrastination mode. And I had to really believe in myself like you can do it. You are worthy of this. And I used to doubt myself like I'm not worthy of being able to run a business. And I had to talk to myself like, why not? Why not you? So those were my biggest two factors to make me really push hard and really go for my business. It has been a blessing. This year has really been a blessing in the takeoff. You really have to put time in it, especially on those days when you really not seeing the progress because you're going to have those days when it comes to running your business. You're going to have those days and you're going to have a lot of those days to where you like, what is the purpose? What is the reason for me doing this? Or why am I continuously doing this when I'm not seeing any result? But you got to plant the seed. You got to plant the seed. You got to water that. You, you know, you got to water it. You got to nurture it. You got to let it grow. But you got to believe that that seed and that harvest is going to grow. All right. More heard up. And you talked about you having COVID. Mm -hmm. How has the era uh, of COVID affected your business, whether it be good or bad? Well, you know, the bad thing, especially in 2020, we really couldn't get out. So my business is people. And not being able to talk directly to people because some people are not tech savvy. So being able to go to appointments, going to businesses, going to, um, you know, uh, churches and being able to hold events. I couldn't do that anymore. But a good thing about technology, you're able to do the same thing that you were able to do in front of people on Zoom or, you know, a, a, a virtual streaming service, Facebook Live, doing videos, doing TikTok videos, those things, um, you know, you can elevate a market on a whole different level that you were not able to reach, you know, just being able to go into your local neighborhood and community or statewide. Now I'm able to hit a mass of people in different states, different areas. Um, so it has been a blessing. It has been a lesson, but it has been a blessing. Um, the bad side, I am a people person. I like to talk to people and I like to be around them a lot. Like this is how you build relationships with people. But, um, since it is starting to lift, um, have a couple of events. Um, if you guys, um, may the, um, ooh, excuse me, may the, uh, 14th, well, we just coming up May the 14th. Um, I am going to, um, I will be doing an event in, um, Cincinnati it's called the Lead Her Conference, and I will be one of the keynote speakers at the event, but it's a good networking event, event for um, entrepreneur women. Um, men are invited, but these, you know, it's, it's a great um, platform and a big platform, um, one of the biggest platforms for me to be a, a keynote speaker there. And, and tell us some more about that. The Lead Her, you said the Lead Her Conference? Yes, it's the Lead Her Conference. It's... Uh, May 14th, thank you guys on the post. Um, one of my clients and business partners, she has, um, she's a, a powerful, I love her, woman entrepreneur. Her name is Gary Davis and she owns Water Lily um, Child Learning um, Centers um, down in Cincinnati. And she felt like there was a need for um, women to be heard, um, as well as women entrepreneurs to be able to network and be able to um, really promote your business on a whole different level, because you never know what somebody, you know, somebody that you may or may not know, um, be able to offer a service that you need. So yes, I will. Um, I will be there. I will be one of the keynote speakers. It's an all day affair. It's from 8 a.m. Um, to 5 p.m. Cocktail hour tickets are on sale. You can go on Eventbrite um, to um, order your ticket. Um, we have still the early bird special um, to where you can um, sign up as well as the VIP tickets are available. But um, it's, it's going to be a lot of empowerful women. We're going to have panelists. Um, I'm also going to have a booth there with um, my business partner, a few of my business partners. Um, so I will be having a um, booth. 
set up. So if you do want to learn about um, insurance needs, um, as well as a plan, if you want us to go over your current plan to see what you have, um, we will be sitting down running analysis for you. Dope. Yep. I like that. So somebody in the, in the comments was asking, uh, can you post a link? So we make sure that when we, uh, when we wrap up that we get that link from you to make yeah. sure it's posted on our page. It'll be posted today. So make sure you, you know, hit us with that link and then tag us both in the post and we'll make oh, sure, sure that we're sharing it and, and hitting it. I can't Definitely. guarantee I'll be there because May is a busy month for me as it relates to yeah. work and stuff, but yeah. I, I might have to make that. Yeah, I would love it. I would love it. You know, all the support, um, you know, that just builds morale. I would love for you guys to um, come and, and hang and network. Get, it's a good networking platform, especially for you guys. Um, find other um, entrepreneurs to where you guys can interview. I will send a link. So um, I'll do that here shortly. And you guys can, um, you know, post it on the website as well as post it on your page. Dope. That's really dope. <clears throat> um, what is the number one pitfall that women should avoid when starting a business? The number one pitfall? Just mm -hmm. doubt. You know, sometimes self-sabotage is 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 the worst. Um, setting up a plan. If, if you don't get up every morning and really set your goals and your expectations, how many calls are you going to make? How many people are you going to network to? How many... Um, you know, set a plan. Just don't go blind eye and think that you're going to have the expectation to where you're going to um, be rich overnight. I know a lot of people, especially when it comes to social media, they feel like everything is an overnight. If it's not an overnight success, then I'll need to give up on it. No, it's not easy. First, you know, you have to build your network and then also work on your craft every single day. Nobody should have to um, hold your hand. This is your business. So you have to be passionate enough to have those long nights to study your, your, whatever it is. If it's, if it's a product you're selling, if it's an idea or a motivation, um, or inspiration, you have to learn your craft and you have to be, um, you have to be a pro at it. You and understand that coming into the business, you're going to be green. You're not going to know everything. Everything is going to be exciting, but you're going to be able to have to deal with those pitfalls um, and overcome those obstacles. It is. It's very fluctual when it comes to um, being an entrepreneur because you're going to have days to where you're like, oh, Lord, this is just overwhelming. But if you can get through those days, it's well worth it. And also, you know, don't do it 100 percent on yourself. Don't put that stress on you. Find a team, be able to have people help you build your business. Um, the quicker you can build a team is the quicker you can have your business grow to a level that you never knew that it can grow to. Um, it's just being able to share those ideas with people who encourage you and also stay away from the naysayers. Even if it's, you know, people that you want that you want to support you. And they're don't you have to be okay with that. You have to believe in your vision. You have to believe in your goal. Um, and then later on, they'll follow up. Yeah, I, I definitely believe that. We, we were um, talking about that the other day of, of how much people say that, yeah, I'm going to be there. I'm going to support, blah, 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 blah. And they don't show up. And, uh, you know, you get to the point where, like, I'm not going to even say anything anymore. <laughs> right. Like, I'm going to just leave it alone. And, and you do, and you do, but people will eventually show up. You just got to keep on doing you. And the more that you do you, as well as you're comfortable in the skin that you're in, it'll come and the right people will come your way. It's not about, you know, all people, but it's the right people. And once you have the right people show up, it, it's all well worth it. You know, yeah, I, I, I definitely believe say that. that all the time. <laughs> yeah, I definitely. Mm -hmm. that over the, over the last year, especially, uh, you know, we were talking about COVID that, our close circle of people we've like really um, worked on building each other up and supporting each other and make sure that we show up for each other. So like if nobody else shows up, we know that that core group is there to su support each other and notify each other of what's going on and stuff. And, and like you said, building a team is essential. 
hey, you guys are account accountability partners. That's a good thing. You 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 guys are, you know, each other's support team. So, you know, holding each other accountable, like here, I'm going to support you no matter what. Uh, you know, I'm a, we're going to do this together. You know, it, it, we have a vision together and that makes it even better. So, like you said, it's just, now I know I gotta I gotta come down and see my cousin DJ. Now I done been to a couple of you know we done had several events to <laughs> where we done you know we party, but oh, yeah. um, I do have to I do have to come down. I gotta get out of you know my my little circle. I'm a I'm a homebody, so I do gotta I gotta get out and and come and support and come down and and celebrate because I'm proud of you. Oh, thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Friday night was it it was the bomb. They uh at the barrel house where our DJ at, they had an international women's day party. So oh. my whole set was nothing but female, you know, empowerment joints or like just bangers from all female artists from all genres. And man, it was a party. I'll be down there this Friday. I promise you. Y'all got my word. I'm on camera, I'm on video, so I will be down there this Friday. Well, well, the I, next one I think is what April fifteenth. It's the third yeah. Friday of every month. Third Friday. Okay. Of every month. April fifteenth. Tax Just, day. You know that day. Yeah. Let me know. <laughs> Remind me because my schedule is April, the end of this month, and April, May. I am. I'm booked. So oh, no, I know you are. It's tax season. <laughs> tax season. It is tax, tax season. season. So you know, I got a, I got a couple of events that I am doing. So I will be down there. I'm gonna need to unwind and relax. So. I will bring Definitely. a couple family members with me and we're going to come down there and support and celebrate. Or it up. Or it up. So Tell you your mama I said hi. <laughs> I will. She probably watching. I don't know. Um, so, you know, you were talking about, you know, stress and, you know, we can't act like running a business is all rainbows and butterflies and it's all, you know, money and returns. So what's the most stressful part about running your business and how do you combat that stress? <laughs> you know, when it comes to, you know, my industry, you it may get excited. You got a client. Somebody may reach out to you like, hey, I want a life insurance policy or I want this. And then you schedule an appointment and they don't show up. Mm. Or you have, you know, your team and you're encouraging them. Not only are you encouraging yourself, but you're encouraging them and they're not coming through or, you know, there's full of excuses because when you're working with people, you have to work with their personality on top of your personality. And it can be frustrating. Like, I want to see you win just as well as I want to win, but you got to want it for yourself more than me. Um, and that can be frustrating as well as, like I said, when you're, you're having finances, it's all the frustration that you need when you're, you know, you have a guaranteed product that needs to sell, but you have no one buying it. And that becomes discouraging as well as stressful. So you're like, what am I going to do? You know, how am I going to do this? But you, you just got to keep pressing forward. God don't put more on you than you can bear. And I'm a firm believer of that. Word up. With all of that that you do, and, and we've talked about stress and pitfalls and things like that, what do you do for self-care? There's something that's just for you to just recalibrate yourself. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Lay down, relax. I love having my me days where I don't, I don't answer my phone. I don't get on the phone. I may lay around and get into a series or get into a good movie. You know, I, I love my little, my little musicals, listen to music. Some days I don't even turn on my TV. It's all music all day. Um, that helps. Music is very healing to me. It may get me through, you know, emotions, it, it, cleaning. I am very OCD when it comes to my home in my area. So let me clean, let me organize, let me revamp and get myself, you know, clean up my emotional state as well as my physical state. And then I'm able to tackle, you know, let me, let me tackle it tomorrow. As, as long as I got another breath, let me tackle this tomorrow. That's dope. Now do you do that like once a week or how, how do you schedule that? Um, normally I do it once a week. Um, normally my Saturdays are my, you know, recoup day or, you know, Normally, my Saturdays are my recoup day to where I just relax. 
um, just started doing with my cousins and cousin, you're going to have to come along, um, but come over to my house on Sunday morning and we have self-care Sunday and we okay. just sit there and, you know, have girl talk and go out to brunch and have a good time and enjoy each other. Sometimes you need just positive energy around you. So we have really been focusing on that and just sit there and laugh. Sometimes you just really need to step away from the world and get into your inner circle to where they know you and you know them and you can just really be you and relax and exhale. And that's 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 good energy. I'm a family oriented person. So I love as long as I can be around my family, I know it's going to be a lot of laughs. It's going to be a lot of good times. And that's that's healing for me. That's dope. That's yeah, really that, dope. That's real dope. And, you know, Pickett and I were talking the other day about that, about, you know, we women, we wear so many hats and we have to tailor ourselves and our personalities on a day to day in different situations. So it is nice to be able to like to have a friend, you know, you don't have to talk to that friend every day. But when y'all get together and y'all talk, it's like no time has passed and you can be who you are. Take off all the hats, take off the makeup, take off the lashes and just be relaxed. and be accepted for, for that. You know, that there, there's something to be said about having a circle that embraces and accepts the pieces of you that really make you you and not the facade that you have to wear when you walk out the door every day. Like, yeah, you don't have to be the business owner. You don't have to be the mama. You don't have to be the wife or the girlfriend. You don't have to be. It, it's just you. And you need that. You, you really need that. But also you have to be a little selfish. There's, uh, you know, we all need time for ourselves and sometimes really debriefing and having that you time and just really zoning out is very, it's energizing to me. I love it. Yeah, dope. definitely. Mm -hmm. Dope, dope. So um, before we wrap up and get out here, please tell the people how they can get in touch with you. Oh, I got several ways to where you can get in touch with me. You can actually follow my business page, LRP Financial Services, on Facebook. I also have a website. It's www.lrpfinancialservices. You can um, actually, on both of those platforms, you can um, schedule an appointment. Um, if you wanted to um, schedule some time with me, sit down, do a one-on-one. -on -one. I do do Zoom calls. Um, I will send you a link, schedule an appointment with you. Also, um, you can go on my website, schedule an appointment. Um, I do have, or you can call. Um, my um, 800 number is um, attached to the link, or you can just go online and schedule a time to where we can sit down and do a one-on-one -on -one financial analysis. Dope. dope. That's dope. Really dope. Thank you. <clears throat> Before we get out of here, we got to get into my favorite part of the show. Doom, 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 doom. Brain science, science, science. All right. So we've been talking this whole month about women and women being more present and all the things that, that we women do. So today, you know, we've talked to, to Miss Lania Perkins, which, you know, that's our government name, but we know what it is. But we, we do want to thank you, you know, for coming through because I learned a lot and, and we definitely have to, I'm going to have to go through and find my financial folders so we can sit down and map this thing out because I know uh, with the money I have in my, like, my teacher retirement account that they're investing, I know on one of those accounts I'm losing money. Like they yeah. send me, a, you know, they send me the statement and let me know that I'm losing money. So, yeah, we're going to have to sit down and talk about that. But well, let's get it moved. Yeah, for, so for our, for our brain science this week, we're talking about why we need more women in leadership roles in the workplace. So in today's world, women may not always realize their potential, but once it's unleashed, we have a direct route to success. When we find ourselves in a leadership role, our capability and our abilities are undeniable. However, it's simple to claim that this is not so, that it establishes the need to outline multiple benefits of what women can bring to leadership roles. So one... Like you were talking about planting the seeds in your business. Women leaders paint the future. We plant our seeds. We watch it grow. A woman who is currently not in a leadership role can be a daunting prospect entering such a high profile role without current stigmas that may be attached. 
in turn, this could push away younger generations from striving to break down the barriers. So when you have a woman who is in a leadership role, like you said, we kind of have a responsibility to reach back and grab at least one person. We may yes. not grab a whole flock, but we at least got to go get one because then maybe that one will bring one and that one will bring two. So we keep it going and keep it growing. We women are multitaskers by nature, by heart. And so running a business for us is a natural thing to do because in many times we are the CEOs of our household where we're running everybody's schedule. So why not take those same skills and apply it to running a business? We got this, you know, when it comes to that, right? Exactly. Women believe in teamwork. There's no doubt that we've all seen women demonstrate passion, enthusiasm, and a capability to take command of a situation when we need to be. So if we look at our mothers as caregivers, how they run it like cardio, like Cardi B said, we believe in having a team. We build a network or a village around our students. I mean, around our, our children and our family and me, especially because I work with kids and I live with kids. We build that village. So we believe in teamwork. We believe in, hey, I can't do this, but you can come through and, you know, bless us with your talents. We believe in spreading around the talents that we have. Um communication wise which is this is a big one because jay is always telling me well he's quiet because i talk a lot so somebody gotta shut up that's what he always says but communication wise women are better it is our strongest skill female leaders utilize the power of communication to enhance meaningful conversations with employers co-workers and partners thus creating a whole network and a communication stream that offers clarity so just like you were talking about the things that you've learned about running your insurance business, it's okay to come in not knowing everything. That's why you talk to other people who do know, and then you know more. That's incredible. Women, of course, can help you achieve a better financial outcome because we are CEOs of our families and we're running budgets. We can run budgets for companies and show you how to squeeze, you know, the last penny out of every single dollar because we're used to doing it as the financial stewards of our households in most cases, right? Exactly. Work. Women also bring fresh new outlooks and perspectives to business because we tend to think outside the box because we are magnificent problem solvers. So we can we can find a different way to reach the same goal, whereas men tend to think very linear. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is just the way that their brains are wired to work and our brains are not wired in that way. And that's OK. We're not supposed to think, act and move the same. God made us differently. He wired us differently so that we can work together. Like I know single mothers are out there doing their thing, but let me tell you, you're not supposed to be a single mother. You're not supposed to do it by yourself. That's why it takes a man and a woman to make a baby because you're not supposed to be by yourself. But that's just my soapbox. I'm going to get off of it. So anyway, women in leadership roles close the gender pay gap. Something that is often overlooked is that the gender pay gap can be transformed into a gender opportunity gap. And it has seen that when males and females start their progress from scratch, men are usually offered more opportunities that lead to higher paying positions. So the more women that we have in roles, it closes that opportunity gap, which of course closes the wealth gap between men and women. So, however, with all of these things, employing more women in leadership roles is not the only way to provide opportunities for women. We need to provide more platforms for women, which is what we try to do here at our podcast is provide platforms for women to come in and talk about what they do because people may not know. So the biggest thing we can do is get the word out. If you are patronizing a female owned business, shout it from the rooftops, let other people know so that people know that this business is here and it's available. We tend to think of some, some jobs and some roles as male dominated, but we women, we out here. We're in every single industry and we need to do more to make sure that we are seen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So pick it, it's on you. Final Most thought? definitely. Uh, well, like you said, that it is essential that we do that. And I've, like I talked about last week and the week before, that is how this show started is that I wanted women to have a platform where they had a voice to speak, um, especially, you know, women of our age. I saw a lot of like millennials were having podcasts and women of their age. And, um, and I thought that, you know, I wasn't hearing from women in my age bracket and I wanted them to be heard. 
Um, I knew in 2016, you know, doing a lot of spiritual work that it was time for women to have more of a leadership. And of course we had Hillary running for president and I knew instantly like, no, not that woman, <laughs> not that woman. I needed our women um, or different women, not necessarily women of color, but a different woman, a woman that I felt, women that I felt that were really um, caring for this world, caring for our community and communities across the world to really have a voice. So if, if you've been following us, you know, we started off with what Lady Bounce and A Slate. A Slate is very busy in the many things that she does. So um, she had to step away. You know, it wasn't like a, a separation. She's just very busy. She's an actress. Mm -hmm. She's a book, an author. Um, so then we had Kryptonite on and Kryptonite is very busy. So that's how I just stepped in because we didn't want the, um, the message to be die down and lose. So I stepped in as a co-host, but the, the beginning of this essence of this show was for the women of our age bracket so that they could have a place to speak, be heard and begin to teach and educate the world from our perspective. So exactly. I, I definitely, I definitely think that that is essential and that is the goal of the show. And also, you know, the basis of the show is self care with, being a, a child of a single mother, seeing the things that she went through and growing up in the projects, that it is very essential that as men, we take care of women. And it is more essential that as women, you take care of yourself exactly. because of so many things that you do. Exactly. And, and just to even piggyback on what you're saying, Jason, you know, especially when it's when it comes to women of color, we are the last to be looked at. So we have to make our presence known when it comes to the industry. A lot of us are being okay. Well, we can be in the background, and we're okay with being in the. So really have to step up and really come to the forefront of life and be able to encourage, like you said, somebody else, somebody our age, or younger women of color. And I'm really proud of a lot of the young entrepreneurial African-American women and women of color. They are really stepping up and really making their name in, in the, in the industry. It wasn't like that when we were younger and, you know, in, right. in the early nineties and eighties, you know, we were still under that, you know, parental umbrella to where we have to respect our, what they feel like was our, hierarchy of, mm -hmm. um, to where you know if they didn't say that it went it was right but now we're in a position to where who's to say that we're wrong with anything that we're doing our business is just as important as this person we have to be there um to encourage one another that's how we're going to be able to leverage ourselves out of that economic um gap um, when it comes to other cultures as well as other generations, we have to rebuild. We have to go back to where, you know, we are intertwining our community. We are building our community. We are putting, you know, efforts into um, leadership roles as well as women being able to step up into the forefront and do what's necessary. We got to get out the background, but we have to come up front and as well as our education and knowledge is very important to our community. Like Nikki said, we are um, natural born financial um, advisors because we're managing households. We are multitaskers. Now it's time to go out there and show ourselves, hey, we are value. We not just looked at in a certain light um, as well as a certain, a certain demographic, but there's, there's all like multi shades of our hue so we have multi levels of talent um that comes out of just because we grew up in the projects don't mean um we don't know what we're doing when it comes to business as well as creating um a whole different genre for um our environment as well as our community word up word up definitely yep. Well, yo, that's our show for this week. We want to thank Cotton for coming on and blessing us with the knowledge of insurance. If you do not have insurance, 
It is vital that you do it. Vital. Get the information. We gon' we we got the uh got your page and your information already on our page. So get in touch with uh Lania Perkins so that you can get the information more in detail, a one-on-one situation so that you can start getting your affairs in order and making your money work for you. Um you already have her contact. You know, you can find us anywhere you find your favorite podcast. We're on all social media. Fly with us podcast everywhere. It's your boy Picket Fence. And I'm your girl, Lady Bounce. We out of here. Peace. Peace.